Welcome to our series of PowerCore training videos. This video is called the communication menu. Let's get into the menus from the front screen. And we can go down, you can go up as well, but we'll go down to the communication menu. Hit enter, which is highlighted. The uh, the PowerCore family comes with an RS-485 port, and that port can be configured for two different types of communication. If you hit it, the default is Modbus, uh, but you can also drive PVA gauges off the, off the same port. You can't do both. So if you want to be, uh, if you want the use our Murphy Connect, for instance, or somebody else's telematics and query our Modbus map for control and status and so forth, you would leave it on Modbus. If you want to drive some separate PVA gauges from that same RS-485 port, you couldn't do the Modbus part, but you could all, but you could do the PVA gauges and have a separate panel someplace else in the facility that um, that shows oil pressure, temperature, RPM, you know, whatever whatever you need to have. So uh, it, it's either one or the other. You can't have both. The slave address for the Modbus is uh, for a node number, we used to refer to it as uh, uh, defaults to one. That way, if the uh, if the the folks that are doing the querying, uh, if it's a PLC in a big facility or something, and he has different nodes he wants to query, uh, he'll give this the address number he wants. That way, when he sends a message out over the RS-485, the message only goes to the right recipient. So we would only get messages ad addressed to slave address one or whatever was put in here. Serial setup, baud rate is 19.2, you can change that, that's the default. Uh, stock bits 1, parity is none, you can change that to parity. Um, that's those are the defaults. PV can light, so if you're using the, PV, the PVA uh, option on the RS-45 port, um, you can have the power cord turn on the backlight to the uh, uh, PVA gauges, if you want that, it defaults to off. Can termination is enabled. Uh, what this is, um, is on the, when we're hooked up to an ECU on the CAN bus, usually we are the only ones on the bus besides the ECU. We're on one end and the ECU's on the other, usually. Uh, in that case, you need to have a 120 ohm resistor on each end of the CAN bus. Ours is built in, software controlled, and it's enabled. However, if the, if the power core is a branch off the CAN bus, and there's already another device on the end, then you would, have to, then you would want to turn this CAN termination resistor off because the branches don't require it. It's just on each end of the uh, of the CAN bus, but usually we're just, we're the only ones on the CAN bus with the ECU, but uh, you can have the other. So CAN parameter map, this is a, this is similar to the Modbus map, it's the same idea, only it's accessed through uh, the CAN port. So if, if, if the telematics folks uh, don't have RS-45, they only have a CAN port, they can hook up to the CAN port and query our CAN parameter map and get the same type of control and display items in the map. Uh, it's disabled. Uh, so if, they have, if they're using the CAN parameter map instead of the Modbus, they could drive PVA gauges off the Modbus uh, port off the RS-45 if you, if you wanted to. Anyway, so the CAN parameter map is disabled. The baud rate is 250 kbps. You can adjust that. To different rates. That's the default. So hitting the back button, we can get back out to the main menu. And that concludes the communication menu uh, video. Thank you.